to look at creating a swept blend in the conceptual massing environment in Revit. So I'll start off with something very simple and uh, we have firstly a, an arc reference line which is hosted on three different points which can be, if I can select it, can be uh, dragged to change the shape of the arc. And on that arc we have three points that are hosted on the arc and they can be moved along the arc. So what we're going to do first up is work with these two points, hosted points at the end, which in turn have a model line circle hosted on the point. So when I drag one of these points, the circle will go with it. And so we will select one circle, two circles, and the arc, and then go up to the Create Form tool, and you can see that it creates that uh, shape there, blending from one to the other along a swept path. And if I change that to X-ray, I should be able to somehow pick a point and move that. Change this back to one X-ray, and you can see that the the form changes. The uh, I'll just actually change that to X-ray again so that we can see what's going on here. The uh, point that was used to host the circle is sort of consumed in the process of creating the form when you have model lines as your profile, which makes it a little harder to work with. You can still drag the profile along the path, but uh, it's not as obvious or as easy to do as the original points. So we will change this back now to non-X-ray. Well, one thing I should point out is that the path for a swept blend must be a single element, a line, an arc, or a spline, unlike a sweep, which can have multiple elements. We also cannot have a loop with inside loop for the profile. Revit just does not like that. So uh, let's have a look at the second method. So let's dissolve this and we have our original arc with its points still there. But the points host the circles have been sort of changed. They've, they've lost some of their control there. I'll set that back to always. They do still work and you can change the rotation angle or whatever, but uh, it's a little annoying that they get consumed into the form and then when you dissolve they don't quite come back the way they started out. Now let us make this a little more interesting by adding another model circle and we will host that onto this third hosted point. And we will make that maybe a small circle. So we'll grab, well this time we'll just grab the whole lot. No, let's not. Let us change the circles to reference lines. So we'll filter. And we will see that what we have got here is five lines, which is a bit annoying because that's the other thing that Revit does when you dissolve. It splits that into semicircles. So I'm actually going to delete that because it irritates the hell out of me. It doesn't actually, it's not actually going to make a big difference. 
as we will see in a minute. But I'm going to change these three lines to reference lines. And then I'm going to select the path, create form again. And now I've got some weird and wonderful things happening here. Revit takes a circle and it splits it into two semicircles whenever you create form. And then so you get these horrible joint lines. In this case, my joints don't line up because of the process I just went through of deleting a semicircle and making it 360. Normally the joint would, would align all the way along, but you know, this is interesting to see what's going on. So let's see if we can do anything about that. Now we have the original hosted point is now selectable and it has its properties because when you create a form with reference lines as opposed to model lines, the points and the reference lines are not consumed in the form, which is a, a bit different. So we still have the ability to play around with the ro rotation angle, but in this case it's not actually making any difference. No, it's not going to correct that joint. We would have to fix that some other way. But what I am going to do is, oh, just point out one more thing. I can grab that point and, and uh, move it, but more importantly, I can control its distance from the end parametrically instead of just grabbing it and dragging it. And with the model lines, you could not do that. So let's just make this, instead of normalized curve parameter, which confuses the hell out of people, let's just make that a segment or a, um, a chord length. And instead of that being from the beginning, let's make that from the end and make that a round number. 20 didn't move much, but 50 and it's doing a wonderful twist on the, uh, the form there a and you will sometimes get that so you need to backtrack and kind of rebuild the form. Oh, I don't know if changing it to zero will fix that. No. Okay, so let's dissolve this. And what we will discover is that, to my great pleasure, these hosted points have not been messed around with. Uh, but I'm actually going to delete the circles because I want to do something else that will just demonstrate something for us. Oh, we'll keep the first one, but we will create some reference rectangles by going to the uh, polygon command, set it to four sides. I'm just being lazy here because I like to be able to define the rectangle by its center point. Now I can see that the host for the uh, work plane is on that point there, so I don't need to reset it. Uh, but I do need to when I do the second one, which is that one. See how much easier it is to uh, draw my rectangles? And I will select the whole lot. Filter. I'm only interested in reference lines. Create form. Now we're getting some weird stuff going on here. But this time, when I select that hosted point and rotate by 45, you should get... That's just saying a line is slightly off axis. This time, it rotates the point and the things that are hosted on it. When it was a circle, you couldn't tell that it was doing that. So we can get some interesting uh, effects by doing that. Let's rotate it a little more. 90, see what it does. Really twisting the shape. <coughs> so using a reference lines and hosted points gives you a lot more parametric control so we could also do the same thing with, let's change it back to uh, 
with profiles. Let's dissolve this form. I should have pointed out earlier that obviously this swept blend allows us to have multiple profiles. In the traditional Revit environment, you could only have two profiles on a swept blend. So let me place a component. Ah, I don't have one. Okay, well that will do us for the moment because we've seen that in the in the previous demo. Uh, 